The views expressed and the opinions given by their guests do not necessarily reflect those of the Odyssey Files hosts, its affiliates, or its sponsors. This is Susan Slaughter from Paranormal Caught on Camera, introducing you to the most epic show ever, The Odyssey Files with David Soaring and Michael O'Neill. You're welcome. Pew, 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 pew. Oh! Kim. What are you doing? Well, I'm telling Mike and Dave, it's time to get on the show. Oh, well, the Odyssey Files starts now. Good evening, paranormal community. It is 7 p.m. here on Monday night, President's Day, which means nothing to me, but, you know, might to you. I'm your host, Michael O'Neill. With me, as always, is my co-host for the last four years, Mr. David Soaring, and introducing for the first time for many shows to come, hopefully, <laughs> our newest co-host, Please welcome paranormal investigator, Miss Lauren Infante. Hi, Lauren. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Good. Thank you wow. for joining the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Excited to talk some paranormal things. I don't get a bit, enough of it in my daily life, so this will be good. <laughs> and Dave, how are you? I'm doing all right. Can't shake this stupid cough. I'm sick and tired of it. Six weeks into it. But other than that, I'm good. I, I I have heard people who got the cough, the COVID cough, yeah, uh, had it for like three months. Before. Yay me! <laughs> well, then I'm halfway there. I'm six weeks in, so I got another six to go. Maybe. Yay! There you go. A little golf clap for Dave. What we need is is Pox, <clears throat> uh, Poxitani Phil COVID edition. So if if he doesn't see his shadow. Uh, then you, you get over COVID in like six weeks. Yeah, be nice. But it but if he sees a shadow, it's another I'm, it's I'm another screwed for twelve. It's a it's another six months at least. Yay. <laughs> yeah. It'll be August. I'll still be hacking <laughs> hacking away. I hope not. Well Jesus. If it if it makes you feel any better, I am completely cured. So <laughs> Yeah. I, it makes me feel tons better. <laughs> I, I take great solace in the fact that I'm okay. So right. why why shouldn't any of you? That's right. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. Thank you. So am I. So uh, we got a great show for everybody uh, today. It's it's kind of a a two parter, although I guess for the most part they, they, they can be separate. But we're going to do part one tonight, which is sleep paralysis. And I think this is interesting. It, it's an interesting topic. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that comes up in paranormal claims all the time. Mm -hmm. And shockingly, maybe not shockingly, I guess it depends on your opinion of me. Uh, I never did any research on sleep paralysis ever. Uh, I mean, until now, obviously, for, for, for the show. That's good. I'm glad you threw that in there. <laughs> well, well, I mean, well, yeah, but I mean, up to this show, the last right, 10 prior, years prior of my paranormal right. career, you know, because it's always the same thing over and over and over again. And I, I guess I never really, I never really thought that it was important enough, maybe. Um, well, that's, that's kind of the interesting point of why we chose this topic, though, is because like we were talking months ago about it, is that how is that? How is 8 to 12% of the population that is affected by sleep paralysis, how is it that they're having so many similar experiences, seeing similar things, sim you know, everything is just too close. Like, I, I was in a, a paranormal chat room today, and, and I threw out a question about sleep paralysis. And, one, and somebody who responded said, why is it that when somebody goes into a sleep paralysis, it's always a ghost? 
Why is that? Why is it always like somebody lurking, a dark figure lurking in your room, in the corner or next to your bed? Why isn't it something more pleasant? Why isn't a, a hallucination where you're seeing rainbows and unicorns and shit, you know? And I thought, at first I thought it was kind of a silly answer or a silly question, but then I started thinking about it and I, and I was like, well, I don't know. That is kind of a good question. Why is it always dark? Why is it always negative and scary? You know, hallucina hallucination, the term hallucination in and of itself is not something scary. People hallucinate. I mean, I've hallucinated on LSD and it, and I wasn't, there were no ghosts or demons involved in it. Lauren smiling. She's like, yeah, I knew that guy dropped ass. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm, that, and I'm that, like, <laughs> that definitely explains a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Flashbacks are minimal these days. But anyway, um, but like I never had a bad experience. It was always pleasant. You know, the sky opened up and I saw like mist, like weird colors and, you know, like like uh, amoeba shaped purple and green things flying around. And But it wasn't scary. That's the whole. And so I thought that question was after I kind of let it sit, in, you know, sink in for a little bit. I thought, you know, that's that's really not a bad question. And that's, you know, going into the second half of tonight's show. That's kind of where we're going to go, I think, is, you know, like hot, let's try and figure out if we can or at least get an idea moving forward. Why is everybody having such similar experiences? That Yeah, nope, that's fine. Um, I was. Uh... Yeah, I think I might have a small answer to that, but we, we 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 shall see. So, all right, we are going to jump right into our stories because I'm I've been very excited to do this one for a while. So, Dave, uh, as longtime listeners of the show will will understand, um, I have a love for making fun of cats. Mm -hmm. They deserve it. They should they should be made fun of. Um, and I love doing it that New Jersey love making fun of New Jersey. So if we can ever get like a cat story in New Jersey, Oh, settle down folks. Cause it's, it's going to be amazing. ride. But anyway, so I'm Dave sent me this right story, now. right? New so Jersey cat Dave, story. Dave sent me this, this story that might as well have just been sent directly to me as, as a gift. Uh, cause, cause the title of it, and I've only read the title. So I've had this in, in, in my inbox for like a week, a week now. And I have not read the story, only the title. Cause I'm excited. And, and the title is, I think the devil has disguised himself as a cat and he's living in my house. If that just, oh, shit. That's, that's right up your alley. That's almost like a t-shirt. It should be the next, <laughs> the back of your T-shirt. <laughs> That's right. It, 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 instead of it's not a demon, it should have been yeah. under under that. It should have been. It's probably the cat. That 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 there would have been go. more. There we go. I like All right. that. So, so so here we go. Uh, I'm reading this for the first time. Can't wait. I don't think it's going to disappoint. So, all right. Uh, demonic activity is the. The, the, the topic. I'm a cat lover. I'm so sorry. I have two, Bellamy and Juno. I treat them like my children. Of course you do. And they treat me well back. <laughs> no, they don't. And a month ago, I was on my way to work. I parked my car and stepped out into the parking lot. Negative 10 degree weather, which means they're probably in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I could hear weak meows from under the car next to me. A black kitten popped out and immediately threw itself at my feet, exhausted. There was a bit of an accident when trying to confine her to my car to get her to my apartment where it was warm and safe. So immediately she went to the vet to be checked out and was given her shots and all the clears and then began uh, acclimating to life indoors and a life with me. <laughs> Sorry. For the first week, she spent most of her time in my bathroom. Slow introduction so all cats would get along. I was originally going to nurse her to health and give her, uh, and give her to a trusted rescue group in my area so she could find a forever home. But during my countless bathroom visits to her during the day, I began to bond with her. I named her Suki. 
I felt an intense attachment after only a few days. Shortly after the bond began to form is when things began happening. My other two cats began sleeping with me. Every once in a while before this, I'd wake up in the morning to find them at the edge of uh, my bed, but our sleep schedules are opposite. Suddenly they were attached to my hip during the day and sleeping at the head of my bed on my pillow. Of course they were next to my face every night. That's the most strategic place to strangle you. Duh, Smother you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're going to wake up with their tail in your mouth. Go to uh, anaphylactic shock from the dander. Exactly. Uh, as if they were protecting me while I slept. They would not go near the bathroom. My cats are very shy and sweet. I didn't even think they knew how to hiss until the new cat got here. They suddenly were attacking the bathroom door and Juna began to get sick. She lost weight. The vet has no explanation. And as I said, Suki, the new cat, has been to the vet multiple times and has been given the clear too. I've even gotten second opinions. There's no explanation for the illness. Things began to go missing, like photos and jewelry. <laughs> well, cats are known to be kleptos, so I just want to throw that out there. Then I began waking up in the mm -hmm. night with this terrible feeling of dread. I can no longer have cats in my room at night because the door now needs to be shut. When it's dark, I get the feeling someone, something is looking at me from the other side of the door frame. Boy, she needs to like lay off the periods here. Anyway, uh, I, and I mean that as like punctuation, not like the female monthly thing. Just want to throw it out there. I find myself having to look twice over my shoulder because I'm constantly seeing things out of the corner of my eye. Picture frames have been taken down because they morph in the dark. A couple weeks ago, things amped up. I've started hearing whispers and meows that sound out of tune from a normal cat meow in one end of a room. But this cat is sitting at the end of my at the edge of my bed. Uh, I'll shake it off and think maybe I'm hearing another cat. This cat will disappear for hours on end. Nowhere to be found in my apartment that's sealed tight until the night comes around. I'll be doing work at my desk while I catch a glimpse of this cat out of the corner of my eye. And it's not moving like a cat. She seems to morph in the dark. And when I'm not paying close attention, I'm. I keep thinking I need to get my eyes checked. My other cats have not acclimated to her, which is weird because even kittens and cats I'll foster for rescue groups from time to time will be accepted in a week or two, but it's been months. When I think about something being off about this cat, it's like she knows. I can see her eyes change. The emotion in them, it's different. It's hateful. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Things came to a head tonight when the cat jumped up on the bed while I was trying to go to sleep. I felt her walk up behind me and brush against my back. At first, I could feel her soft fur, but then I felt a man's hand spread across my entire back, brushing it with force. I jumped out of bed, feeling like I was going to cry. I put the cat in the bathroom, and she meowed for a moment. She meowed and cried to be let out, and the last meow was something that couldn't have come from a cat. Uh, I have all the lights on, blinds open, and this terrible feeling something awful is going to happen. I do not think this is a regular cat. I wonder to myself, is the black cat superstition getting to me? Is it right to rehome her? Am I losing my mind? Something is wrong. I definitely agree with that last sentiment. Something is definitely wrong. But it's because you have three cats. That's wrong. So, all right, let's see here. There's a lot to unpack. I'm not getting at all anything that would lead me to believe that this is demonic other than the fact that it's a cat. I mean, but cats are not necessarily demonic. They're more like half-breeds, mm -hmm. so to speak. So, I mean, you're, you're going to get... You're, you're going to get the evil feeling... You know, the, the cat's definitely uh, going to try and kill you eventually. Uh, I think the reason that your other cats, uh, Bellamy and Juno, have not taken to this new cat is because cats hate competition. You know, they, they've claimed you as their puppet 
And this cat is trying to steal that away from them. They don't like that. I mean, that would make me hiss too. But uh, yeah, I honestly, up until the whole like man's hand brushing against your back, which could have been maybe the, the, this cat's face or something. Maybe he was sticking his face in your back and you mistook it for a man's hand. I don't know. I've never had a cat stick his face in my back before because he'd get elbowed. Um, things going missing, like photos and jewelry, is interesting. Uh, but again, I'm sure your cats are just stealing from you. It's what they do. So I honestly can't get behind that anything paranormal in this story is happening at all. Um, but that, yeah, that that's just me. I mean, obviously, if it was more, de- if it was actually demonic, you'd be experiencing way different stuff after a few months. Um, I don't know necessarily that it's a black cat superstition that's getting to you, but I think maybe. I almost want to say that maybe this cat had some sort of germ, some sort of disease that maybe isn't affecting that cat, but you got it and it's making you, you know, a little, a little crazy. I I definitely just, just for the sake uh, uh, of doing everything that you should probably get checked out. Um, But for me, I, 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 I honestly don't see anything paranormal in this story at all. I agree with you. I don't either. I think that uh, somewhere on this journey that she's on with these cats, she has scared the hell out of herself. And now it's manifesting and it's growing and it's taking on its own type of energy to the point where every time she hears something, she's, she's, overreacting to what's happening um you know i would i would say that it's it's probably highly unlikely that lucifer would come as a back to earth as a black kitten and then spend months in a bathroom subtly trying to terrify you and stealing your jewelry i just don't see that happening so (laughs) i'm just I i can't get behind anything paranormal happening here either uh, other than the title, which I thought it was it's a great title, um, but I I don't I don't think there's anything going on there either. Honestly, I think that it's uh, I think it's she's just her imagination's running away with her is is how, is what I would say. Yeah, I I would agree. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would agree with that. I think the. The only thing that struck me is like, okay, maybe was like, Mike, like you said, like the guy's hand on her back. But then again, you live with three cats. So there are explanations for that. But I mean, cats are territorial. Not all cats are going to get along. And that cat was obviously an outdoor cat. You found it outside and it was sick for a while. So yeah, not every meow is going to be perfect, you know? (laughs) So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go off of just that as like, oh my God, my cat is possessed because it's making a weird sound. Cats make weird sounds all the time. It just, it's just a thing. I, I, I think she's just freaking herself out. Like you guys said, I think that's all it is. Just like calm down. If the cat is not going to get along with your other cats, give it to somebody else that maybe doesn't have a cat. So it can be the only cat and then everything will be fine. You know, you can rehome the cat. It'll be okay. Yeah. I will bet you that her cats are racist. That's a theory. Oh, that's a theory, all right. Sam, you bring in a black cat and all of a sudden people are acting weird. So I'm just just saying, maybe they're maybe they're racist. Wow. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, that's right. I went there. That's I went there. yeah, you you did. Yeah, that's probably I was you you might be right. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't think there's I don't think there's any reason not to rehome this cat and honestly, I would rehome it as soon as possible. You know, I would get it out of the house because it's obviously affecting her other two cats that she's already had for a, a, an extended period of time, whether that's been a year, five years, who knows. But it's it's obviously affecting those cats and it's and it's going to affect their behavior. And, you know, and you, I don't know, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that to one of my animals. 
like if I brought an animal home, like if I had a dog that was five years old and we were best buddies and I brought and I lost my mind and decided to go get a puppy or found a puppy and decided that I was going to keep it and it started really affecting my dog, I would rehome it and get rid of it because it's not fair to my dog that's been with me for five years, you know, and it's the same thing with the cats, any of your pets. But um, but I, I would rehome it and get it the hell out of the house. And it, it'll also help alleviate her mental state. Now, if she gets rid of the cat and she still feels a guy's hand sliding down her back, well, that's a whole different story, you know. Yeah. But um, but if, if she gets rid of the cat and everything goes away, yeah, that's that's what I think is going to happen. All right. We ready to move on? Yes, mm-hmm. sir. Okay. Number two, there's a snake in my room. So this all happens when I'm half asleep, but definitely still conscious as I remember what I saw and my responding to it in detail. I mention that because being close to sleep is a bit of a disqualifier for me since it could be just a dream or my brain being sleepy. So take my experience with a grain of salt. I have this reoccurring almost dream with a shadow figure, always in the shape of a snake that I would guesstimate to be about six foot long. Uh, It approaches my bed while I'm trying to sleep. More specifically, it keeps trying to get around me to where my girlfriend is asleep. Uh, It will vanish without fail if confronted, uh, which is where my girlfriend comes in. She has woken up to me telling various spots in the room off. So I could just vision he's like sitting up in bed or whatever, yelling at a corner of the room. Uh, She describes it like I'm commanding a pet. One time she was awake and watched me calmly sit up and fling my pillow at something. She thought I was sleepwalking, but when she tried to talk to me, I responded normally with, it was just the snake, but I took care of it. I remember every interaction, and it always goes just how she describes it. So unlike classic sleepwalking. I'm posting because last night we were house-sitting for my parents and had another experience. Uh, Pretty uneventful. I just glared at it and said, don't you effing try. And she said it was probably a bit more intimidating than I intended. But this morning, she made the comment that it's weird that this only happens at my parents' house and only when we stay in this one specific guest room. It's never happened anywhere else, including other rooms in the house or in the same house, which made me wonder what could be causing this interaction. So I asked the people of the sub, is it some spooky shit or just a weird sleep phenomenon that only happens in my parents' primary guest room? Uh, As a side note, Uh, My mother, sister, and aunt have all mentioned hearing a kid talk to them when they were at the house alone near or inside of that same room. Possibly unrelated, but worth mentioning. All right. Um, There's there's something, if if it's only happening in that one particular room, I'm going to say that there's something happening in that room. Um, if If you just took the snake... And it was just this guy and nobody else was experiencing anything. I would say that I would, I would try to check every single physical, normal world possibility, high EMF fields, CO2, radon gas. I I would try, I, I would try every single aspect of why he's getting affected by something in the physical world that's causing him to have these almost hallucinations that be the logical side of me the fact that they hear a kid talking in the same room when they're home alone and that three other people have heard it i don't think that that's i think that that's totally worth mentioning and i don't think it's unrelated at all because the paranormal side of me says that there's something going on specifically in that room. And I don't know that it's necessarily focused on him, but that he has the ability to see it, that he has the ability to experience it. So maybe he's more open to stuff like that. The other reason that I picked this story and the story caught my eye was because I have for years, uh, and I haven't had one for a while, last probably eight years ago since the last time I saw it. But I have for years had a giant black serpent, probably. I mean, it's, it's almost like a Cobra, but it's not, but its head is probably 
you know, two feet wide and it's probably 20 feet long and it's extremely fast and it never is, it never seems to want to harm anybody, but it's intimidating as hell. So it shows up and it'll coil up and it'll sit there. And then when I go to look at it and I'm kind of the same way when I, like when I, when I see it in the room, I'm the same way. I get up and go after it to chase it out and it'll take off and it's fast as hell, but it won't leave the room. It'll just move to a different spot and I can never catch it. Um, like I said, I haven't seen it for a while. I don't know if that's part of like something that happened in my childhood and it's just a flashback type of dream or if it's part of a sleep paralysis thing. I don't think it's sleep paralysis because I'm actually up and moving in the room. So obviously that would get rid of the whole entire paralysis side of sleep paralysis. Uh, but I, but I can understand where this guy's coming from and how it can be frustrating. Thankfully it's not aggressive, but I, I do think something paranormal is going on in this case, especially when you throw in the kid's voice coming from the same bedroom, something weird is happening. Go ahead, Lauren. Okay. Um, yeah, the, that's. Dave, that's the one thing that kind of stood out to me is that they hear the kid talking. Yeah. And I, I would assume that the writer of the story is a guy. Yeah. So he's the one seeing the serpent or snake or whatever it is. And then you have all of the females of the household that are hearing a kid. Mm -hmm. So that makes me think, is there something funky going on there? If there actually is something, is it changing its appearance Maybe in some way. I don't know. That's just a theory. But um, yeah, I think it's really interesting because I do think there can be a lot of symbolism in animals, especially when they show up in dreams. So I think that might be something for this guy to look into. I know serpents and like snakes are supposed to be like, you know, like sneaky and like um, deceiving and kind of conniving and go along those lines. So I'd be interested to see if that would have any connection to the other parts of his life, but that's just, that's just me going on analyzing dreams, but it's something to think about. And yeah, I would agree. There might definitely be something going on in that room. If multiple people are do it, if are having experiences. That snake might be trying to show itself as a way to intimidate him. And, and as a way to lure the females in act as a child. Exactly. I mean, that's the first place that my mind went to when I read it. You know, and I, like I said, when I read it, I, I totally think that that was worth mentioning. I think if he'd have left that fact out, I would have had a total different read on what he posted. So me too. It, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that you know it definitely would have been. I'm, but I'm actually going to leave my answer the way it is. Although, I, I, what I agree with too is that it was worth mentioning. Um. What I went to originally and right away was potentially high EMF. I mean, it's that one room. It never happens anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, usually there's there, there's something wrong with, with that room, but there's never anything different. Like the closet door doesn't open, you know, this night, or he doesn't hear disembodied voices another night. Like it's always this snake. Mm -hmm. And and nothing else. And then the, you know, the females or whatever, the, the mother, sister, and aunt only hear the child's voice and that's it. Like there's just no other activity, period. And, you know, I, I think that EMF sensitivity runs in, is genetic. Like I think if you have, you know, if your parents or, or whatever uh, has high sensitivity to emf you know so will so will the child i mean let's not uh, i guess get rid of the fact that the girlfriend doesn't hear the child's voice i mean she has not experienced anything period except him mm -hmm. you know like screaming at different things through she's never seen the snake she's never uh you know she's never heard the kid's voice and you know, the one thing to take into account here is the fact that all of the, the people who are experiencing something are all part of the same family. So if there is something paranormal going on, it's directed at the family and not just anybody who's in that room. Or there's something that is going on 
that messes with them because of their genetics. You know, they're, you know, maybe they're all highly sensitive to EMF and the girlfriend isn't, um, right. you know, so I, I would like to, I mean, obviously, obviously since this is a, a Reddit story, you know, up, an update probably isn't going to come, but you know, that that's kind of a case that I, I would just like to, I get updates on to see if anything else happens to see if it, it just stays in that smooth plateau of, you know, the women of the family hear the little girl's voice and he sees the snake. Um, and especially since I can only assume that this has been going on for a while um, because they don't always stay with the parents. So, I mean, it's like house sitting and stuff like that. So um, over the course of time, and we don't know how long it is with just nothing else happening period, except for the very specific one, one, two, I, I, it's gotta be something else. I just, I, I can't imagine any sort of intelligent entity just doing that one thing over and over and over again and nothing else. Yeah. I, I would agree with you on that. I, that would, you know, it'd be awfully, awfully boring you know, if you were the spirit and you're like, oh, I can't wait for him to come back so I can turn into a six foot snake again. <laughs> you know, and I can't wait to yeah. last home alone so I could giggle like a little kid in the room, you know? Yeah, that would be, yeah. I will say this, you know, like a six foot snake wouldn't scare me. I'm not afraid of snakes though at all. So like I used to pin my ex down whoo, with my left arm, pin her to the mattress when this, this serpent showed up. But like I said, mine was, you know, it was probably every bit at 20 to 30 feet long and it's two to three feet wide. I mean, it's a big, big serpent. It takes up, it's an intimidating figure when it's in the bedroom. So a six foot snake, I, you know, I don't know. Whatever he's seeing, he's seeing something, you know, he sees it too frequently. It's not like he only saw, if he only saw it once or twice and that was it, I would be like, yeah. He saw something, but he, he's just his brain is trying to process it and made it into a, a six foot snake. But the fact that he sees it all the time and he like tells it to get out, and he throws pillows at it, and he's awake and something's going on. I mean, I, and, and it also, and I also find it curious that it disappears every time it's confronted. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I just think that I, when I do too, I think that's weird. Yeah, I I, I just think that he's blowing up his own hallucination when when he confronts it and you know just kind of like well let's just leave it at that <laughs> just you know kind of one of those things where you, you do it in like you know it just kind of bursts into a puff of smoke you know right. that that that's that sort of thing um you know and again i just i i can't see any sort of intelligent entity stopping there and be like oh i threw a pillow at me poof i'm gone you know now i'm scared like it just i i, I can't see it there, there there's either something more going on which is not part of the story or it it's it's not paranormal and it could be either one so i mean who who knows what yeah coin flip he failed to yeah, but who knows what he failed to mention. Right. So they might not be comfortable talking about. Exactly. All right, All right. Moving on. All righty. So this one is called, has anyone experienced something similar? Is there anything I can do about it? Hello. So we, me and my partner, recently moved into a new house. A couple of things have happened so far. We hear a large crashing noise coming from the living room heard things breaking and everything, but we went in and nothing had happened at all. It was enough to scare the heck out of the guinea pigs because all eight were hiding and would not come out. Eight is a lot of guinea pigs. It's a lot of guinea pigs. Uh, yes. The pigs. cat didn't seem as bothered, but looked confused Doctor. more than anything. Uh, when we heard a creaking sound coming from the living room the next night, like a door would, like a door would if it was moving in the wind or being opened, uh, but we do not have a door in the living room. We only have the front door, the bathroom, and a bedroom door, and that's it. 
Then the following night, our boiler was unplugged. I can't reach it, and my partner swears up and down it wasn't him. Plus, he had to shower in freezing water the next morning, so it wouldn't make sense for him to do it. I'm not new to the paranormal stuff in general. A lot has happened to me throughout the years, but this is new for my partner. He is, let me start that over. He has gone from being an atheist to believing pretty quickly. I just don't understand why whatever is being so aggressive recently. Could it be the new house? Could something be attached to me? Because I have no clue. This may be relate. This may be unrelated, but we have a cut. I'm having trouble reading tonight. My apologies. This may be unrelated, but I am having a consistent stream of terrible luck since since September, and now this. Maybe they're unrelated. Maybe maybe they're related. Maybe they're not. I really don't know. I just want to know what to do about it. It isn't harmful so far, but I don't like that it's enough to scare our pets. One thing did scare me. Two of our pets passed away recently. And whatever it was made the same gasping for air noise as one of them. Whatever it was made the same gasping for air noise as one of them. Twice. You have no idea how much of a panic I went into. I've also heard a couple things, like the sound of something being dragged. My partner said it was probably coming from upstairs, so I shrugged it off. But now I don't think it, now I don't think it was. I'm just worried because more and more seems to be happening and I don't know how to control it. There is a lot going on and there are eight guinea pigs and a cat. That's a lot of animals, which would lead me to believe that there are a lot of natural explanations, especially for the sounds that they're hearing. I'd be interested to know if they just let their guinea pigs roam around or if they have them like kenneled up, you know, I would assume they do, but who knows. Um, and we see this a lot. Like if, if you get a new house, that doesn't necessarily mean it won't be haunted because some spirits are attached to land or they're attached to objects. So just because you have a new house doesn't mean it's 100% guaranteed to not have a haunting in it just because it's a new building or a new structure. Um, I do. I, I think that there might be something going on here. I don't really know if it's too much to be worried about. The only thing that makes me hesitate saying that was the two pets, but it doesn't seem that doesn't seem to be that correlated aside from a noise that they made. So I wouldn't really put too much stock into that, but that's just me. Um, yeah, I mean, if this came across our like our plates, I would say it's maybe worth an investigation, but I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts? So, uh, you know, as you were reading this, I mean, the first thing that came to mind is residual, you know, like the crashing and, uh, you know, the dragging. I mean, it, it, all of it just seems not to be interacting with them at all. It's just happening. Um, naturally, the cat's not bothered i mean duh and i wouldn't doubt it if the cat in some way killed the guinea pigs so you know food hunt sport who knows maybe he's practicing for when he goes after the humans the the thing that i i, I guess makes me want to ask the question of is this like a duplex or a town home or something like that is because, you know, when he's hearing that dragging sound, his partner was like, oh, it was coming from upstairs. And he was like, oh, okay. Well, if you're the only two that live there in this new house, why does the sound from up upstairs not bother you? So there's got to be it, other people. It would bother me. <laughs> well, right. I mean, right. oh, it's coming from upstairs. Like, if we were the only, if we were the only people... Like Dave, if you and I were, were were in the theater room and all of a sudden there's footsteps above me, I'd be like, what the F is that? And you're like, up, oh, it just sounds upstairs. like it sounds like it's it's coming from upstairs. I wouldn't sit there and be like, oh, all right, and then go back to the movie. <laughs> no, there should I'd be, be up, sounds I'd be, upstairs. Right. right. I'd be upstairs asking who it was. Yep. Ex exactly. You know, so Grab the I, I, I'm wondering. No. Um <laughs> but uh, no, because that's it's simply get the F out of my house. 
Right, exactly. But, um, but yeah, so I can only assume that, yeah, they're calling it a, they're, they're, they're calling it a new house. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have to assume just because of that, that there's, maybe a there's other people. Yeah. yeah. A, a condo, something right. where pe- people are above and below or, 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 or whatever. Um, I mean, and honestly, I mean, guinea pigs, any animals, guinea pigs, cat, whatever, are far more sensitive to things than, than we are. So if there's a sound that's going on, if there's a smell, if there's a feel, you know, yeah, they're going to they're going to run and hide. Doesn't mean that it's paranormal. It just means that there's something weird about the flow of the house that they don't like. Right. Or or as the last story said acclimated to the boiler being unplugged i i i guess i would have to as an investigator you know just going on the the premise that we got this case um i would have to see how hard it is to get to i mean there's nothing that says the cat couldn't have gone over and and unplugged it Tripped on um it, yeah yeah tripped on it pulled it out on purpose, maybe wanted to, to his owners to take some cold showers, cold shower, you know, give you the cold shower of death, you know, that, that, that sort of thing. Um, so, I mean, that could be, that, that honestly could be anything. I mean, but as for your consistent stream of terrible luck, yeah. Join the club, buddy. So you're not special in that. So I honestly just think that you're going through a rough patch. It happens. Uh, it does not mean that it's paranormal. It does not mean that there's a spirit out to get you. Um, like you said, it's not harmful so far. In fact, it doesn't even seem to be interacting with you whatsoever. Um, uh, again, I think that there's a lot of natural explanations for this. And if there is anything paranormal going on, I think it's residual. You know the, the 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 crashing, the dragging. Um, depend. I mean, yeah, it's a new house, but as Lauren pointed out, if it's a brand new building as opposed to a new house to you, then yeah, definitely could be the land. Um, you know, it just or if it's just a new house to you, but it was built in 1930. You no, know, then you probably have some energy left over. But. Uh, yeah, again, agreed with with Lauren. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing to be afraid of here. Um, obviously, if all of your guinea pigs start to die, and your cat has a grin on his face, I just get rid of the cat. I would do that anyway, but you know, that's just me. So I'm not going to reiterate everything you guys said because I want to move on to the last uh, couple stories, but. I, the one thing that caught me here uh, off of this whole thing, other than what you guys said, and I agree with where you're both, uh, where both your points are. Uh, he has gone from being atheist to believing pretty quickly. So is she saying that he was a stout atheist and now that they've heard a couple of unfamiliar noises in a house they just moved into, he has transitioned in a fear mode to the point where now he's a full-blown believer in God because he's so terrified of what's happening in his house. Cause I got to tell you what, there's a whole lot worse shit happening out in the world than a couple of dragging noises that you can't explain and a hot water boiler getting unplugged. So I, I found that to be odd. I don't know if she meant a different word than atheist in that context, you know, like a, a, a skeptic or a non-believer in paranormal. But, yeah. but I just, when I read that first time, I'm like, so he's an atheist and now he's running to God because there's dragging noises in a place they just moved into that they're unfamiliar with. That just, okay, yeah, man, I, whatever I, floats your boat. But I, I, I don't think he meant that she, he's a, 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 she, he, whatever. She said my partner. So, I mean, yeah, he, usually she's referring to her boyfriend or her you know, whatever, but you don't know that anyway. 
and yes, moot point. Right. Anyways, moot point. So I don't, I don't know if that person, the the author of the story, uh, was saying that he this person went from atheist to believing in God. I think he just went from not believing in anything spiritual whatsoever to believing in the paranormal. Well, that's one way to read it. That's not how I read it. If you go, he has gone from being atheist to believing pretty quickly. Whatever. That, that does, has nothing to do with paranormal. Anyway. Bad terminology. Um, yeah. It's, it, I don't think it's written that well. All right. All right. So, I mean, hmm. all right. Oh, you, that's what she just read. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Yeah, next one. Dop- yeah, number four. I'm not. Doppelganger or dimensional rift? A few years ago, my family <sighs> decided to host my cousin's sweet 16 birthday party at a local church, renting out the event room. The party went on without a hitch. And by the time uh, we were cleaning things up, it had gotten dark out. I was with my other cousin, not the birthday girl, moving boxes of party decorations to the car. We both stood behind the car, putting the boxes in the trunk, talking about the events that went on that night. We both started to head back inside. I went around the right side of the car and she went the long way around the left side of the car. We should have met back up at the front of the car by the hood at the same time. I fully intended to continue our conversation. Instead, I saw her at least three feet in front of me walking quickly back into the building. I followed her back inside, trying to catch up with a quick jog, but she was walking faster than I could jog. I followed her around the corner and watched as she entered the bathroom. Ah, that must be it, I thought to myself. She really had to go to the bathroom. I stood outside the restroom, waiting on her, when suddenly my cousin, the one that I thought I had just seen walk into the bathroom, walked around the corner. She asked what I was doing as we had just brought out the last boxes. I didn't know how to reply. I needed to know who I followed. So we should have been the only people with access to the building. Well, as we should have been the only people with access to the building. I opened the door and looked around. Nobody was in there. I looked in the two stalls with no luck. I walked out and left with my cousin, locking the door to the building as we left. I forgot about this whole event until about a year ago when I started getting into paranormal podcasts. The Odyssey Files. A few things to note. Who or whatever I followed into the church looked just like my cousin from behind. Long black hair and shorter than me with an athletic build. It's a recognizable silhouette even in the dark. I saw more than its silhouette when we entered back into the building where the dim lights proved to me it looked exactly like my cousin from behind, though I, it stayed five feet ahead of me, consistently moving very quickly. It was only a quick walk, no running. I am sure the bathroom didn't have any other exits, and after confronting my cousin late last year, she had no memory of this event as it didn't seem out of the ordinary to her. It's been about five years. Something I also remember was the lights in the bathroom were motion activated and were already on when I opened the door to investigate. If you have any ideas as to what that could be, let me know. First, let me just say that my raspy voice really like parched my throat and I need to take a drink. (laughs) Okay, I'm back. So, I mean, obviously if you're the only two there and you're the only two that have access to the building, I mean, if there were still a lot of people around from the party or whatever, I would have said you probably just followed somebody else in. Um, but obviously with you opening up the door and checking the bathroom and nobody being in there, uh, changes things a little bit. I don't know. I, I don't think it was a doppelganger. Um, but it might have, and not a dimensional rift, but it might have been a time slip in some fashion. Whether it was you or her, I have no idea. I would like to know, like, how you lost her around the car. Like, you just went around the car, and you were going to meet up in the front of the car. How, How do you lose her? Like, how do you mistake, even whether it's a doppelganger or not, how do you not, how do you lose her? 
Like, how do you not see the other one around the car? And how does that cousin not be like, hey, where are you going? Like, we're done. You know, she never called out, never nothing. I don't know. I I think this story is weird. I I I, re- I read so what you're asking on that, I read it as there's no way in hell that she should have been able to get that far in front of him. Well, right. But I mean, right. I mean, like, like that was because, you know, as he's thinking, OK, she's going the long way around the car. I'm going the, the short way around the car. We're going to kind of meet up at the front of the car. By the time he gets to the front of the car, she's already five feet out ahead of him and heading to the building. And he's kind of jogging and walking fast, like a quick jog. But she was walking faster and wasn't jogging. To me, that right there caught my eye. So and, and to me, that that would be something paranormal. Like if this thing is going to keep a five foot distance, it, I think if he took off in a full sprint run to like grab her joking around, I think that she would have just still been walking, but still maintained somehow maintained that five foot safety distance. And he would have never caught her. Even I, I don't think he would have caught her. I don't think that he even on a full run, I don't think he would have got to her. Because I don't think they were in the same space at the same time. I can get behind you know, I, that. I mean, I, I mean, I, I completely see your point. I just can't get over the fact that, like, they lost each other just going around the damn car. Right. You would think like, you would call out too, especially if you're having a conversation about, "Hey, everything went great tonight at the party," and blah blah blah, and you're talking about something else, and he intends to pick the conversation back up. I I would think like you would yell out and be like, "Hey, I." You know, I wanted to finish our story or I wanted to finish telling you what we were talking about or something to that effect that you would or, or say just, something. Or just, where are you going? Yeah. Is everything okay? You know, like, <laughs> you know. Why are you walking so fast? Slow <laughs> yeah. down. I right. mean. The mosquitoes aren't like, that bad. <laughs> but the entire trip into the church, he's just like, I right. need to catch up. And like, no words were said. And the cousin who I'm assuming was still making the it, the, the way around the car didn't be like, also, where are you going? You know, like they didn't follow or anything until like a few minutes later. I don't know. There's something wrong with this story. I'm 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 almost almost wondering if if it's made up. It's just too many like things that should have by human nature happened, which didn't. And I don't know. Lauren, what do you think? Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent buying into this. I do think it's interesting though. So if we go on the assumption that this is a, this, this is a true story. If we're going on that assumption, why would a spirit be imitating also assuming it's not a doppelganger? Why would a spirit be imitating somebody that this person knows very well and leading them back into the building that they're just about to leave? And it's church, which in my mind is like, okay, usually if somebody's in it going to a church, they're looking for some kind of guidance or help. So maybe it was somebody trying to like, hey, don't leave yet. I want you to stay here kind of thing. Or maybe they just didn't want the party to end. I don't know. Maybe it was a really good party. Um, But I mean, yeah, I just... We, we talked about this recently on the team that like, I believe that spirits, if they can learn how to, um, they can kind of change how they present themselves. So I, again, assuming that this is a true story and that this isn't something that somebody made up, I don't see it very unlikely that a spirit is trying to get somebody to stay by imitating the look of somebody that they trust. So I, don't know, I think it's interesting, especially that it happened at a church. I just, I'm very interested in the like stories that happen to happen at churches because that's like a whole different environment. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, it, beyond just you know, like the the, the spirit taking uh, uh, the cousin's form, I think, the, and going on the assumption that this is real. And, well, um, and, and, we have to, we always have to assume that they're 
real. Well, right, right. I mean, I, yeah. I throw away hundreds of them that are totally, as I read them, I throw the bullshit flag. Bullshit flag, move on. Bullshit flag, you know. I've read some really good uh -huh. ones, but they're like 17 yeah. paragraphs and I'm not going to read for 12 minutes to, to try and get the story out either, you know. So there's like this parameters that they have to kind of fit into for our show. Yeah, that, that, I, that's what we'll have Lauren do from now on. Oh, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if it's real and the, I, I think there's only two explanations. It's either, yeah, a, a, a spirit or entity taking their form in order to lead them back into the, or at least the, the, the author back into the church, or it's a, a, a time slip of some sort. Um, I'm no going to vote idea. for time. I'm going to vote for some sort of dimensional shift. I think there's something to that whole five foot distance thing. And, and the fact that he started walking quicker and almost was at a, a kind of a fast jog or a medium jog. And she was still just walking and he wasn't closing distance. I find that to be very unique. You know, like that, like he should have caught her and didn't. And I find that to be interesting. Like that, like this entity was able to keep its pace, a normal looking pace, but able to keep its distance at will. Hmm. That's it. It's, gotcha. you know, who knows? All right, let's sneak in number five because I like this one. Yep. Hunting for a new house. Uh, I have been house hunting and recently found what appeared to be the perfect house. It's a nice older two story with everything we want. I went and checked it out just to see if it was too good to be true. It was exactly as described and would be perfect for my family. I just felt completely uncomfortable there. It felt like something was watching my every move, and I had this constant chill of fear down my back. I told my realtor that while that house was perfect to all appearances, I just felt weird about it, and we would have to keep looking. She agreed that there was something off, as though we were being watched, and we both left. That night, I had the first weird dream and sleep paralysis incident. I'm in the living room of that house in front of the fireplace, and there is a boy on the stairs. I can hear a man and a woman arguing in the kitchen. The boy keeps motioning me to come upstairs, and when I get near, he pushes me into the closet and closes the door. The argument escalates to just screaming, which is cut off to a gurgling sound, and then footsteps on the steps. I try to look through the crack in the door, and I see a large shadow pass. Then I hear the boy pleading and silence. The footsteps head back to the hallway and stop in front of the door. When the door jerks open, I wake up in my room and there's a man standing over me. He just stares down at me and I can't move or speak. It feels like an eternity, but in reality, it's only a minute or so. And then he is gone. And I can move again. What the hell is happening? Is it the house I walked in? Uh, I, I find this to be extremely interesting. This is an extremely interesting story. Um, I think that this lady has some really good abilities that she might be completely unaware of and that whatever freaked her out, whatever initially made her feel uncomfortable in the house and chills down her back and the realtor felt it too, whatever that uncomfortable feeling was, was this incident this dream that she nightmare whatever you want to call it that she had that probably happened in the house and i think that's what happened here i think somehow she witnessed the murder of the wife and the boy in the house and that she could pick up on the fact that there had been death in the house that was an unnatural death and that it left a stain strong enough for her to feel it and I applaud her for thinking the house was great and then deciding that that's not the right house to move my family into. Because that wouldn't have gone well, I don't think. I think she'd be calling a lot of paranormal teams and a lot of holy water. <laughs> you know, and I think this male presence is probably is the murderer, most likely was the father. Uh, could have been a boyfriend, I guess. But um I think that that male presence is the presence that's in this this property that that she felt. 
Yeah, I I love this story. I think it's one of the better ones I've seen come off of Reddit in quite a bit of time. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff on Reddit. Um, so reading through the first like half of this, when she walks in and she just feels uncomfortable, I'm like, okay, might be high enough. Like we said, some people have sensitivities and it can give you that feeling of just like being uncomfortable or like somebody's watching you. But then when she has this weird dream right after she goes into the house, I, like I said before, I think there's a lot of symbolism to dreams. So I do think that she, like Dave said, I think she picked up on something when she went there and maybe this man who seems to be intelligent because he was staring at her at the end of the dream and obviously realizing that she was there, he might have kind of like, maybe she reminded him of the wife or whatever, some person from his past and he felt compelled to go either attach himself to her in some way or just go visit in her dream. And then she wakes up and he's still there. Like that, that's, that would freak any normal person out. I'll just say that that's a freaky dream on top of you wake up and you see this dude who was from the dream standing over you. And you're like, I'm pretty sure you're a murderer. A little scary. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't think of that Dave until you mentioned that she probably does have like some kind of, there has to be some reason that she would get that dream. That right. didn't, that doesn't just happen that vividly. I think there's no. a reason behind that. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, you, it's rare to hear of somebody like who's shopping for a new house have something like this happen to him. You know, I mean, so I think that there, she possesses some type of ability. And I and maybe the entity that's at the house picked up on that and followed her home and got into her dream and was trying to intimidate her. You know, I don't know. And it could be that she reminded him of the wife that he killed. Because I'm assuming the gurgling sound and stuff, that was a choke out. And then the boys pleading for his life, and then there's silence. You know, so I mean, obviously, it is you don't have to read too deep into the, to the story to kind of get the feeling that it didn't end well for this, the little boy and the and the, the lady in the kitchen. If I were her, I would ask the realtor if she could get the history of the house and see if something actually did happen there that was documented. Because yeah. I think in certain states, realtors have to disclose that information to you if you ask. But that I think that'd be a good starting point for her because then she could kind of validate what she saw and then maybe... Be like, okay, I need. I have some things I need to work on because obviously I have some kind of capabilities here. So, right, yeah. If she was spot on with that, like if there That's was amazing, a, like if she went to the like the newspaper and went and bagged, dug in the archives, and there was a story with that address or at least that city and that you know a house, and there was a guy who murdered a young woman and a a kid upstairs. Yeah, that would freak the hell out of me. I know that there are um, there are a lot of stories of people who have, especially recurring dreams of homes and people and you know incidents and stuff that they have no no reason to have knowledge of. But then, for some reason, then they go to house hunting, and all of a sudden they get to a house and it's like they've been there. A thousand times before like they know where the stairways go they know where the bedrooms are um and and, and it's 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 creepy but i i definitely think that i agree with you dave i i think that she she has some sort of innate ability um that she was able to gleam this you know I almost can't even say it's a memory um, because the boy was motioning to her mm -hmm. like specifically, you know, if, if, it, if she was just gleaming this memory, even whether it was off the boy, whether it was off the, the, the man that was standing there, she just would have been an audience member. She just right. would have watched it happen, right. but she became a, a part of it. And so I don't know if while she was there, if they the, the, like the father and the son are both there and they both attach themselves to her. And the, the father was trying to 
you know, I almost, uh, I agree with you that if anything, the, the spirit of the father took her as maybe his wife or somebody close to it and was trying to get her, you know, scared, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, frightened her. And, and the boy seeing this as well also entered whatever the hell they were doing and protected her, you know, kept her safe while this whole thing was, was, was going on. I too would like to see if that happened or if that whole incident was spiritual in nature. Um, if the, the wife and the son were trying to defend her, you know, the, the, the author of this to get him to not do it. And he silenced them himself in this dream or, or in this, whatever this experience was, um, kind of as a way of saying, you know, as a punishment. And I, I would like to know if one, if that was true, if two, if she's had this dream again, if, if this has happened uh, uh, on, on a recurring basis. Uh, but if it's a one-off, um, I think she should probably count herself lucky and never go to that house again. Um, but ha have you guys noticed how many stories of, of like paranormal hauntings start with this was the perfect house. Well, sure. This was our, this was our dream house. That's because they're, they're drawn to that locale for a reason. Like I, you know, like it's like, a, it's kind of predestined, you know, like I, I don't believe in coincidence. I think everything happens for a reason. And you know, she was meant to see that house. You know, she's looking for the perfect house for her family. It met all of the criteria. It was probably priced really well, which is why she was like, I had to go see, you know, because that's that's it's what I got out of true. that, right? If it was too good to be true, which means it was a really nice house that was really upkept, that fit a lot of her bucket list once at a really great price. And again, it might have been a really great price because it has a dark cloud on its history. You know, it might be in the market for a long time because people that live in the neighborhood know what happened there and they steer people or, away. Or everybody gets a very uncomfortable feeling when they go. Right, in. right. Or or that figure or that presence that could be there was, is intimidating and he makes himself known, you know, to everybody who goes in there. I mean, you know, we've always, we talked about it a lot in the past. It takes a, a, and we don't know this for a fact, but we're going on the assumption of what we think we know. It takes, I, I got to imagine, it takes an absolute ton of energy for any type of spirit or any type of dimensional being to enter into your dreams. Like that could not be an easy feat. You know, they, I don't, I don't believe that we're vulnerable while we're sleeping. I believe we're in different locations. I mean, I, I travel at times. I don't do it all the time, but I travel at times. If there's some place I want to see or something I want to check out, I'll astral project out for a while. But I don't think that we're vulnerable when we're sleeping. I think that something has to be extremely powerful to break the barrier that's set in place that kind of protects all of us while we're in our, our sleep state. You know, I just I don't think it's easy for something to just walk through and start messing with you. I think it I think it has to be something that either has knowledge because of wisdom and age and time and practice from some other place that comes and does it. Or I, I guess there are people that probably have lowered their barrier for specific reasons that leave themselves too vulnerable. And I think, and I suppose that's obviously that could be the case too, you know, but for most of us, I think when we sleep, I think we're protected. That's what guardian angels are for, right? Keep an eye on yeah. us when we're not paying attention. Hmm. Boy, mine have been doing a shit job, but that's okay. I'm used to it. Protecting you while you sleep. Yeah, sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Um, yeah, uh, I, I agree. I really like this story. Um, but uh, th- I hope that there's a follow up to it again. I'll tag it and see if, if something else gets posted. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I think when she walked in there, somehow she's got, she's got an energy that they, the, the whole family connected with, mm-hmm. you know, and, and if there, if there was a murder, depending on how long ago it was, I wonder if whoever the author was, um, was reincarnated was like the wife reincarnated. And that's how they knew her. That's how they were able to attach herself so easily. Maybe. Maybe there was a babysitter there. Yeah, or like an older sister or something. Right, because I mean, the boys felt comfortable motioning like, come on, come on, come on. I we I got to protect you. We got to go hide. I You know, the, it's really interesting that he put her in the closet, but he didn't go in the closet with her. Right? Almost yeah. in a defensive, I need to protect you type of mentality. And, and so that had to be a very strange feeling for her. That this little boy is protecting her and then sacrifices his own life while trying to keep her safe. That's a very... That's a, I, that's that's very unique. Like I'm not really sure that I've heard a whole lot of stories like that, where you would see a child yeah. protecting an adult type of thing, you know, and keeping the adult safe while I I I give up myself in sacrifice. So I don't know. Interesting. It's an interesting story. I like that one. That's why I wanted to get to it before we got on to our next topic. Yeah. So we can do one more story, or we can hop to commercial and get it get into our topic what do you want to do lauren do you want to read one more um or do you want to jump into sleep paralysis i'm kind of excited to jump into sleep paralysis here right. i think okay. that's a good like segue into it because she had the dream and she was a little paralyzed there for a minute or two so right yeah. exactly all righty well then uh we're going to take a quick commercial break which is pretty much just a montage of uh, a bunch of celebs insulting dave and i um, that, that is, uh, I was going to say this at the beginning of the show that it, it reminded me that now we have to do, redo all of our, all of our stuff because now it's Mike, Dave, and Lauren. It's not mm. just Dave and Mike. I wouldn't do that right away. It's fine. Oh, Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean it like, no, I didn't mean it like that, but like, I like the stuff you guys got. So like, don't erase all of it just yet. You know, I would never erase it. No way. Okay, yeah, we're not going to erase <laughs> it. I was going to say like, please don't do that. No, no, <laughs> no. We're just, we're just going to add to it. So, all right. Uh, we'll be back in about a minute and a half and we'll get into our topic. You are listening to the Odyssey Files here wherever it is you're listening to it (laughs) be back in a moment hey this is grant wilson from ghost hunters and if you ever have time that you never want to get back spend it listening to mike and dave on the odyssey files hey everybody it's chad lindberg and you are listening to the odyssey files uh with david and michael and let me tell you it's almost as painful as a skype glitch I am Chuck Zukowski from UFONut.com and Alien Highway. I thought I was the only UFO nut until I met Mike and Dave with the Odyssey Files. They're a lot crazier than I am. Hello, I'm Al Lagarde from Paper Out Productions, executive producer of Kindred Spirits, Paranormal State, a whole bunch of television shows. And I've worked with a lot of people on paranormal projects and met a lot of people in paranormal radio. And I want to say that Dave and Mike are two people who have a face for radio. In particular, internet radio. Hey, it's Chris Fleming. More painful than a Tyrannosaurus Rex stepping on your testicle. Listen to Dave and Mike on Odyssey Files. This is Elizabeth Saint. You know, in my journeys, I've confronted an over a thousand-year-old demon from the depths of Shepherdstown. But then, you know what happened? I came across Mike and Dave. And hot damn, nothing could have prepared me for the Odyssey Files. My second favorite radio show. I love you guys. And we are back. So, 
That one's never going to get old. Nope. Never. Never, never, never. never. All right. Uh, Sleep paralysis, which, as I said earlier in the show, uh, up until doing research for this particular episode, uh, despite being in the paranormal for like 10 years now, have never bothered to do any research on it. And I, I'm, I feel bad for not doing that because like this, all of this would have helped me anytime, you know, whether it's a story about sleep paralysis or whether a client had sleep paralysis, like all this information, like medical information um, would have been useful in order to, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's not like I was like, oh, you know, I just shrugged my shoulders, like figure it out on your own. You know, this doesn't really change. (laughs) This doesn't really change Uh, any, any advice or, or, or any answer that, that I have, but this helps me back it up. You know, it helps me explain better, you know, what, uh, what, Ever my answer was to to the claim that that was done, and so I I just want to because for the first time I looked up exactly what is the medical definition of sleep paralysis. Like what do they say it is, and that's where I felt that maybe uh, should, did not do my due diligence when when it came to that. Um, so. Medically speaking, sleep paralysis, feeling of being conscious, but unable to move. It occurs when a person passes between the stages of wakefulness and sleep. You're able, you're, you are unable to move or speak for a few seconds up to a few minutes. You might also feel pressure or a feeling of choking, which as we all know, is exactly what almost everybody feels. And, and and that's one of the reasons that people feel that it's paranormal. Right. Is because of that pressure on your chest and right. the feeling of being choked. And then, you know, we, we kind of mentioned it earlier, the whole, you know, the the the, the Hague, you know, the hooded figure. Right. Um, you know, why do you always see a dark entity? Um when when doing it. so i guess you know so that is the medical kind of official i guess definition of uh, of sleep paralysis but you know what do you guys what do you guys think of it i think it's a tidy medical definition for something they completely don't understand I think that sleep paralysis is a lot more complicated than the simplification of that answer. I don't think that it's always medically explainable. I think that somewhere in here, somewhere in the cycle of sleep paralysis and the symptoms that are associated with it, I think that there is legitimate paranormal activity happening at times. And then I think at other times, there are issues like stress, substance abuse, um, anxiety issues. Those are some of the, like the, the trigger aspects for triggering an episode of sleep paralysis. Um, you know, basically not being able to calm your mind before you lay down to sleep. And so if you go to bed with a busy mind, I think you have a little bit better probability of having some type of incident like that but i but i certainly don't think that i think that it's a great subject matter and i think it's a great concept in general because i think that this is one place where the intersection happens between the medical field and the paranormal world i think that legitimately that this there's two worlds coming together here and these two worlds somehow have very similar results and actions and there's no way to clearly separate these two things they're too intertwined 
And I, and I think that's what makes it so damn difficult for people to say bullshit. I wasn't asleep. I was awake. I saw that entity standing in my room over my bed. I saw the old hag floating above my, in the space as I was laying in bed. I saw her, you know, right. I mean, it's just, there's too many people seeing that shit. Too many people are seeing it and too many people are seeing the same stuff. If you got eight to ten percent, eight to twelve percent of the population having parano- having sleep paralysis episodes, and eighty plus percent of those episodes are can be told over and over and over and over and over again, and they're all consistent from people from all over the world, from all different ages, in all different social economic income stratus. How is that possible? Right? I, I, it's not. I don't think it's possible. And so I think that this is legitimately, that's why I like this topic. I think legitimately it's it's it it's science and the paranormal kind of meeting at, at, at a space and overlapping. What do you think, Lauren? Yeah, I mean, I think you... You definitely covered a lot of the points that I thought were really interesting when covering this topic. And I think one of the things that stood out to me the most was if you have a fear of it, it's more likely to happen to you, which we have seen in paranormal investigations. When you are harboring that fear energy inside of you, it gives them like it gives the entity something to feed off of usually. And it's usually the negative ones that can go right to it, like a fly to a light or whatever it is. Um, So I thought that was really interesting. But yeah, I was looking back at like, how far back this goes. And it goes back to like ancient civilizations Mm -hmm. across the globe that would have no way of communicating with each other that are seeing the same things. And at that point, you don't have like social media like we do now or horror movies that are depicting these stereotypical like a witch or a hag or whatever it is. You don't have any of that back then, but you're still seeing the consistencies and it is carried through to present day, which in of itself is kind of astounding. Um, I do think like the like the fear kind of plays into it. I do think like there are situations where medications might play into it a little bit because that is kind of messing with the chemicals in your brain. But there are like we don't still totally understand how the human brain works. So, right. you know, like, yes, science can say like, OK, this might be a plausible explanation for why this is happening, but I don't think it's a hundred percent solid yet just because there are so many factors going into even, we don't understand why we dream, let alone like lucid dreaming or sleep paralysis. So it's kind of hard for me to be like, yes, this is a hundred percent. There are no cases of any paranormal, anything being involved with sleep paralysis when we still don't understand the basics of that kind of stuff, you know? So I think it is really interesting, but yeah, I, yeah, it's, there, there's a lot to unpack with this guy, but I like it. It's, it's a really interesting topic. I, um, you know, uh, one of the things, and you brought up, you know, the fact that it goes way, way back. In, in fact, um, during some of the research that I did, um, it, it kind of even attributed it brought up the Salem witch trials and how many people reported nighttime attacks by multiple witches, including this, you know, Bridget Bishop um, that may have just been sleep paralysis. You know, the thing that, um, that I like to keep in mind, you know, with, with this is even when you go back into middle ages or you know when the history of this goes past and you know the salem witch trials everybody has some sort of definition of what is fearful and evil and you know whether it's it's witchcraft whether it's the occult whether it's black magic and if you don't know what sleep paralysis is and you have a bout of it even back then the first thought is somebody's hexing you, you know, somebody's cursing you, somebody's doing this to you. I mean, even, even 
all of the medical stuff that I had read says, this is going to be very scary. <laughs> like this is very frightening. And, 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 and I can, I would think only people who are used to it would be able to get over that. They would, you know, they would wake up and be like, Oh, I'm sleep paralysis again. You know, I'll just wait a couple minutes and you know, I'll be fine. But if you're not used to it, if you're you experiencing it the first time or the second time, you're probably going to be scared out of your wits. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when people do that, they immediately go to something bad is there. Something negative is doing this to me. Some, you know, and, and I think that their minds uh, choose w when they, you know, are still dreaming to pick what they believe their their tormentor is you know dave i i don't know if you read this i'm sure you did i thought it was because obviously i knew about old hague syndrome mm -hmm. a lot of people see the old hague and i saw this on wikipedia and it's like the three most well-known entities that are seen is the old hague the hooded figure and then a man with a hat yep and I'm like, oh, oh, I I had heard about the hooded figure. I had yep. heard about the old hey. I I didn't. I had never heard a story about sleep paralysis dealing with the hat man. Obviously, the consciousness. They see him during the day. They see him all over the place, but right. never in a state of of sleep paralysis in their dreams. Sure. Um. So that that was kind of weird. Uh. It was surprising to me that that is considered or that he is considered to be, you know, one of the top three figures that people see during bouts of sleep paralysis. But is I, that, I, you know, is I that... would agree with you. Cause I thought the same thing. I was like, why is he on the top three? I would just think yeah, it would I... just be a dark shadow, just a, a shadow, just a dark figure of a silhouette of a humanoid type of figure you know, would be like number three. I, I, I was shocked to see that too. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't, I think there's a medical reason. Like I, I think there's a natural, I shouldn't even say medical reason, a natural explanation for why people continually see the same things. And I'm sure that, that that's not a hundred percent. Those are just the top three. I'm sure people see all sorts of things, you know, I'm oh, sure, sure people yeah. see, you know, hellhounds or, you know, the, the wolves with red eyes, you know, all sorts of things, whatever they, I, I guess, whatever they want to choose to be the reason for why they're in this, you know, state. Um, but, and it also goes with how much do they know? Are they part of the, do, do they pay attention to stories of sleep paralysis? You know, do they know of old Hague syndrome? Do they know of the hooded figures? Um, and, and, and I agree with you. Not 100% of sleep paralysis cases are medically and naturally done, you know, are, are naturally explained. I definitely think that there is some sort of a paranormal reason why some of these incidents happen. Um, but from what I've seen, like all, I don't know if you guys went into like what other cultures consider like sleep paralysis to be Um, little, you did a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I found it. I, I mean, I didn't go full on, you know, or whatever, but like in all cultures, whatever they're, they're, translation of sleep paralysis is it has something to do with the supernatural or evil um you know the chinese their their translation for sleep paralysis is ghost pressing on the body korea uh being pressed down by something scary in a dream vietnamese held down by ghost iceland um it's called having a mara which is like a goblin or a succubus um you know, Mexico, there's like a dead person on you. And I mean, all of these cultures, not just ours, 
just the basic thought of sleep paralysis has a negative connotation to it. So, I mean, I, I don't know if that fits into to people's mindsets because <laughs> I, I, I guess if I had sleep paralysis in in Iceland, I wouldn't be like, oh, there's a succubus on me. Like that wouldn't be my thought. Right. Um, but I, I, I guess what, what's your, your takes on, uh, on those and just other cultures, you know, thinking that sleep paralysis has something to do with the supernatural and, and evil. I think it's an easy explanation. Honestly, I think it's, it's just, it's an easy way to go. I agree. A lot of the stuff I read, people said, I, I've had sleep paralysis uh, incidences. Um, a lot of the stuff that I read, like eyewitness accounts and stuff, that's kind of where I focused my attention to was, you know, people said that they would rather experience a whole multitude of things like a real ghost coming in the room, you know, versus having another incident of sleep paralysis because they're so scared during that sleep that that two minutes or one minute or 30 seconds or whatever it is, it's so terrifying to them that they would, that they can't imagine that there'd be anything scarier out there. Now I, I've had my fair share of incidences like that, but, I, but mine have never been terrifying. And I've never had anybody sitting on my chest. I might either comes from somebody comes out from the wall behind me and pushes just on my shoulders and I can move the whole entire rest of my body, but my shoulders are pinned like almost like they're at literally staked with metal stakes into like a wooden frame underneath me. And I cannot move my shoulders at all, but I can move the whole rest of my body. I can move my head. I can look around. I can do the whole nine yards. I could go like this, but I can't quite see who it is, but there's somebody that's standing behind me and their arms come out through the wall and do that. Um, the other feeling is I, I get this immense, best way to describe it is like a gigantic bear hug where it like totally encompasses me, my whole entire body in this gigantic hug. And it just encapsulates everything about me. And I can't move anything at that point. I can't move my hands, my feet, nothing, but there's no pressure moment. It's just the inability to move. That one I think is simply explained by maybe stress. You know, maybe it's it's just my mind is awake, my body's muscles aren't moving yet. I get. I mean, that would be my explanation if you asked me what's happening, Dave. I, that's what I would tell you is happening. The one coming out of the wall is totally different. That's totally not stress related. It's something is odd about that one. And the other one that I've had more than once would be being picked up off the mattress, like. To the ceiling, almost being pinned to the ceiling. And that's a really odd feeling. When you look down and you can see your mattress is about eight feet below you, that's a really uh, that's a really unique uh, sensation. And then you get dropped. But you never get hurt. So I don't know what's happening there. I don't know if that's my mind or if I don't know if that's paranormal. I can't answer that one because that's a really... I mean, to me, if I had to take like throw a wild answer for that, I would say it's almost like extraterrestrial. It almost feels like you're being sucked up into the sky, but you don't quite get sucked all the way up into the sky. You only get lifted part of the way, and then for some reason you get let go. Like the tractor beam fails. I weigh too much. Maybe that's it. Maybe maybe big people don't can't get sucked up. Maybe there's limitations to their gravitational beam. Maybe you got to be under 225 in order to get yeah, sucked up yeah. into space. <laughs> I'm safe. Yeah, there's a weight there's a weight limit to their tractor. There's beam. a weight, weight yeah. limit to the tractor <laughs> beam. I'm safe. All those people telling me I need to lose weight. I'm safe from ETs, bitch. <laughs> That's right. I'm not fat. I'm anti-alien. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So I mean, you know, that's a really weird sensation. I don't, I don't know yeah. what's going on with that one, but, but there, it's odd and it's scary, you know, when it happens. It's a whole uh, sense of of helplessness. I think is what's is scary, is that feeling of helplessness. 
Mm-hmm. Like you want to read, you want to call off for somebody. Them. Yeah. You want to call, like if you're, you know, you're married, you're, or you're, you know, you have a significant other, you're sleeping together. They're right in the same bed with you. You're trying to reach out for them and you can't do a damn thing. And that probably perpetuates the fear tenfold or a hundredfold. You know, why the hell can't they hear me? Now you're going into some type of panic mode. You know, why can't I reach out and tap them on the shoulder and tell them I need help? Now you're getting into that panic mode. It's causing you to freak out. And that, I think that's just a normal human reaction. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's just, that's ingrained in all of us, I think. Right? I want to be able to move. If I can't move, something bad is happening to me. You know, whether it's paranormal or whether it's, you know, medical condition or whether it's just simply your mind is awake and your body isn't. I don't know. I can't answer that. Like I said, there's too much that overlaps in this, in this topic that there's just absolute, I just feel there's no absolute clear answers, but it's fascinating when you dig into it. Kind of reminds me of like when you, when you look at like all the ancient cultures and everybody drew star men on their cave paintings, right? So you got these star men carvings and in these statues in China and India, and then you go to the caves of South America and they've got these star men and then you go to the Sahara Desert and they've got sculptures and little miniature star men figurines. Who the hell was making all the star men? Why is everybody making astronaut you know, things when there was no astronauts? And all these different cultures were not talking to each other. You know, well, it's not like least- they were sharing concepts and ideas. Not back far enough. I mean, once once people started traveling the oceans and getting brave and going out in the ocean then possibly they brought their wares and goods and stories and whatever and shared those stories. And then it rubbed off on different cultures. I understand that. Obviously, that's how we all progress and learn. But when we we weren't traveling the continents, how was all that similarity happening? I think this is kind of the same thing. I I was just going to say that at at least now we know why all of the paintings of all the abductees, everybody was in shape. Right. Right. They were all thin. Right. Because they're the only ones that can be abducted. Right. But back in those times, I don't, there wasn't too many guys my size walking around anyway, because everybody was like five, five and they were worked to death and they all weighed 98 pounds. I would say usually uh, people that would run. uh, Yeah. Fast. For their lives because yeah. that's what they were well, doing was running for their lives well right but let, let, let me just point out here that i can run really fast too just not for very long so i used okay. to make a hell of a 20 foot sprint and then that was it i was done <laughs> and then i'd yep. stop and turn around and be like come and get some because <laughs> yep. i'm done running so whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen come on let's dance you know, I could do the 40, 40 foot sprint in 5.2 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you get to 20 so, feet in about 10 seconds. <laughs> that's enough. Sometimes that's all you need. Hey, if you're, <laughs> if it takes you 12, if it takes the person next to me 12 or 14 seconds, I'm safe. Right. That's all you got to say. I don't need to be faster than you. I just don't need to be last. Right. As long right. as somebody's I, slower yeah. than me in the group, I'm fine. Or if I have a stick with me, somebody's going to get tripped. Mm-hmm. It's not personal. It's just what's going to happen. <laughs> it's bus- It's just business. It's, it's just, just business. business. It's just business. <laughs> right. It's not that I don't like you as a human being. It's just that you happen to be close enough to me to stick that stick in between your legs and cause you to trip and fall. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I don't need to be fast. I just need to be faster than you. And if <laughs> I can't, then I need to be smarter than you. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> and if I can't be either, I'm the one that's dead. Yeah, I'm the one who's getting it. <laughs> so, um, Lauren, what's your take on, like, the whole, you know, because part of, part of the things that people often experience um, during sleep paralysis is like a loud buzzing, the sensation of being dragged out of bed, flying, and obviously the difficulty breathing. But 
by taking this, a lot of researchers and stuff have kind of put out there that not all, you know, none of them have said all, but that a portion of abductee like claims and stories are simply like misidentification of a sleep paralysis. Do you, I mean, do you think that that's possible or do you, do you think that, you know, like all alien type stuff are aliens? Yeah, I think, I think there's overlap. Um, I do think some are misidentified as both. Um, but I mean, I, I read this, I actually was going through and one article that I was going through was like the five most common visual entities that people come in contact with them. One of them is aliens. And I'm like, okay, if you think about it, if like, at least our understanding for those of us that haven't been abducted, but you know, um, you get drawn up in whether it be a tractor beam or, beam or something, but you are paralyzed when it happens mm -hmm. and aliens to our understanding have that technology. So that would make sense in my mind that there would be some misidentification between the two. I bet you some cases of sleep, what people think is sleep paralysis is actually an abduction and the other way around. You know, I, I could see because they, they do sound very similar. Um, and I also think it's really interesting because a lot of, um, I read a lot of psychics that were talking about sleep paralysis. They say it kind of leads to out of body experience experiences for those that are a little more in tuned as well. So there are different different areas of you either kind of leave your body or your body is physically going somewhere but in most ca in like all cases you can't move because that's the paralysis part of sleep paralysis um so i think there are a lot of different different situations that can happen and sleep paralysis might be kind of more of an umbrella term for a lot of things that you can't explain because medical doctors have said okay, sleep paralysis is a thing. So people that are like, okay, I know I don't want to be labeled as crazy. I'll just say it's sleep paralysis and not even entertain the thought of it being anything else. I could see that being a logical explanation for a lot of people when they are in fact experiencing something else. Yeah, I could see that. So, I mean, one thing that I want to get in here, so there's only about 15 minutes left. And, and, and that is, you know, uh, going back to the actual medical stuff, um, the causes and the treatments, because I think that this is important when, when you're dealing with, especially with clients and, and people who are coming to you with, this is what I experienced, what, you know, what's your take on it? So, I mean, for anybody who is listening, who has had sleep paralysis, you know, did, did any of this, did any of the following like come up? Disturbed REM cycle, you know, obviously REM, you know, rapid eye movement is, you know, what, what you need to achieve in order to dream. And so what, what they're saying is, um, when, when you go into REM sleep, your brain paralyzes your body as, as, you know, same as, you know, when you drink too much alcohol, your body makes you pass out. It's a safety mechanism. They don't want your, your brain does not want you to act out your dreams. So it paralyzes your body in order to, you know, make sure that you don't. So when you all of a sudden become conscious, but your brain hasn't unparalyzed you, that is what they're saying to sleep paralysis is, is that your brain is still keeping you paralyzed and that's why it only lasts for a couple seconds to maybe a minute or two depending on you know how, how fast your, your brain lets you go <laughs> but so disturbed REM cycle um there's some science to say it's partly genetic um I know that they say people with narcolepsy and sleep apnea and sleep apnea is a huge problem nowadays <laughs> I mean everybody seems to have sleep apnea now um, are more prone to have sleep paralysis, uh, you know, experiences. Stress, obviously. Here is um, what I, I guess I did not 
take into account as being a possible um, cause of this. And this is actually uh, under my treatments, you know, kind of, you know, to get rid of it, is going to bed at the same time every night. Mm. Um, they're saying like, if you go to bed at 10 and then the next night it's midnight and then it's, you know, 11 and then you're, it's three in the morning. Like you may be, you're completely screwing up your sleep schedule. Um, you're more prone to have a sleep paralysis, uh, experience. So they, so one of the, the cures for it is to go to bed at the same time every night, have consistent, a consistent sleep schedule, skip the nap. <laughs> we all love naps. Naps are amazing. But, you know, if, if you're prone to sleep paralysis, you might want to skip it. And then just in, instead of taking a nap at three and going to bed at 11, maybe just go to bed at nine and skip the nap. Um, but uh, social anxiety and panic disorders, that's on, a, on the rise. <laughs> everybody has a, a, a social anxiety or, or some sort of panic disorder. Um, but uh, did either of you come up with or, or come across like more causes to it or blue like light. what, what the blue, blue light? Yeah. From your tablet, your phone, the actual shade of blue mm. stimulate. It's, it's already, no, it's been proven that they chose that color blue specifically because it stimulates parts of your brain. And that actually it's been proven time and time again, that it actually disturbs your ability to, to sleep because your brain is overstimulated and active. My youngest daughter does it to herself all the time. I used to take the kids phones away from them and they used to hate me for it. And I'm like, you're going to appreciate it when you actually get a good night's sleep. And it's not, you don't need to be up, at one o'clock in the morning when you got to get up for school tomorrow and you got stuff to do at school tomorrow, you don't need to worry about what the hell's going on on the internet tonight, you know? So I used to be the phone police and, uh, you know, it, it was, it, 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 it's just, I've been, I've been saying that for a long time, right? It's not that important. It's like social media is not that important, right? It isn't. And the fact that they knowingly use that color blue, which knowing that it stimulates part of your brain, uh, really is criminal. You know, we just had the girls on from Cap Paranormal, and what was she wearing? She had on her blue blocker glasses. So that, it, remember, when she put them on, she's like, yeah, these are those glasses that specifically cancel out the blue wavelengths from my tablet if i'm reading at night or if i'm on my phone late at night it cancels out the blue wave therefore not affecting not i don't get the effects of what would happen if i didn't have my glasses on she didn't say that but that's what they're for <laughs> she thought they were a fashion statement <laughs> but that's what they're that's what they're for is there to cancel out that blue light so that your brain can actually just behave normally be tired and then and then fall asleep and get into a good sound sleep well well then cuz cuz that was actually part of um like the treatment for for sleep paralysis was an environment clear of distractions well good luck with you know, that yeah again the medical geniuses that sit behind their little desk and write all these phenomenal groundbreaking uh, recommendations. Good luck with well, I mean, good luck with having the non-stressful environment. Non-distractive. Yeah. Okay. Non-stressful, non-distractive. Right. Same difference. It's a coin flip on that one. Good luck with either one of those. Uh, so, I mean, Lauren, did you come across any <sighs> treatments or, or 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 cures for sleep paralysis? You know that that people might be able to to, to use if they're experiencing it? I think you hit the big ones. I think one, if somebody was suffering from sleep paralysis, like regularly, and it was disrupting their life, I would say, make sure you have a healthy sleep routine. Cause like we said, like getting in like a solid, like eight hour, eight or nine hours or however long that you need, that is very important to make it consistent because your body likes consistency. 
So that's going to help. If that doesn't fix anything, I would take a look at if you're taking any medications, if it might be a side effect of that and talk to your doctor. Maybe there's some switch that they can make and maybe you'd make the switch and you don't have that problem nearly as much. It could be something like that. Um, if it keeps happening, that's something maybe to reach out to somebody about. Um, I, I do firmly believe, because I've seen it with myself, that my dreams vary in intensity depending on my anxiety levels. I know that's just for me, but like we said, there's everybody has anxiety now. It's so common. It's ridiculous. So I would recommend maybe reaching out if you do recognize that like, hey, if I'm really stressed out, I notice my dreams get a little crazier or I have a sleep paralysis episode, might be worth reaching out to somebody about that, you know? But there's a lot of avenues that you can go down. Um, but yeah, I just kind of tick through them and see which works for you because everybody's different. So what what if you recognize the fact that you're having sleep paralysis, right? You understand that it's happening. Why not, if, if you can't control it, if it's genetic, let's say, right? Like Mike said, it could be, you know, running in family genes, you know, like you could have an altered gene that causes you this disruption between your, your REM cycle sleep and your body and your brain waking up and your body being still in the paralyzed state. Why can't you tell your bot, tell your mind or train your mind, I guess, to not let it be a scary situation. Right. I mean, why does it always have to be negative? That's my question. And I asked that, that's what I asked earlier tonight. You know, why is it always, why is it always darkness that surrounds this? Why can't it be unicorns? Why can't it be fairies flying around the room? Tinkerbell fly, you know, whatever. Why can't it be something positive or something fun or something whimsical or something comical? Why does it always have to be death and destruction and the devil's in my room and the hat man's here and there's a hooded monk and, you know, everything is, is despair. You know, why do our minds always run to that? It's, it, it seems like in a way that that's like what we talk about a lot when we talk about how everybody thinks that it's demonic activity in their house when it's just either not either nothing it's just or you know just natural causes that they need to have shown to them or it's grandpa coming back or grandma coming back just watching over and wanting to make sure that they're okay but everybody goes oh my god it's a demon no it's no it's not <laughs> if it was a demon no. your life would be miserable but i mean i think that if you if you deal with sleep paralysis on a, on a near normal basis, you know, maybe once a week and we have had stories where people have it quite frequently. Yeah. I think that they, those are the people who can probably wake up and, and realize what is going on and be like, okay, you know, whatever. But I don't think anybody is going to train their mind or train themselves to wake up with sleep paralysis and be like, woohoo, this is great. You know, bring on the fairies and unicorns. Why not? I, I don't because why? <laughs> well, because it's because it's the, then it wouldn't be a scary incident. It wouldn't be a scary thing anymore. It well, al you could I mean, almost turn it into a positive. Right. Well, true, I mean, but you, I mean if you had a positive experience with it, it, then it wouldn't be this. I'm not a whole person or a complete person because I have this issue and then people get stressed out about it. And then they have anxiety because of it. You could alleviate that pool of negativity of self worthlessness feeling. And by turning it into something that's fun, comical, whimsical, I'm not saying it's going to be like winning, you know, the price is right. I'm just saying, to get away from the darkness side of it. Well, I, I, I would like to see somebody who deals with sleep paralysis on, on a semi-normal basis to see if you know months down the road of this happening or years, you know, down the road or or anything like that, if they are experiencing anything evil, 
if they are seeing, if they are still seeing the Hague, if they are still seeing them, like I would think that after a while, if it is based on your own mentality, right. that once you, once you become indifferent, once you be, you become just like, ah, oh, all right, I have to lay here until my brain lets me move again. Do you still see that? Or is it completely a mass hysteria thing where you're brand new to this, you don't know what is going on, uh, and you wake up and you freak out? And then your mind creates this hallucin hallucination as a way of explaining what is happening to you. And, and then once why, you why do you see the same three figures then? Like, why wouldn't you see Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees? Or why is it, you know, why is it always the guy? Well, it's in the not. World? Well, right. But you said you brought it up and said, you know, the top three significantly, <laughs> the top three are these particular same visual ideas. So, well, right. The, the, why, they're the top why, three, but that doesn't mean the list isn't like 20 different well, right, figures. I get that. Right. I'm sure it's 20,000 figures, depending on what culture that you live in. You know, it could be a Chinese dragon terrorizing you. You know, who knows? Maybe maybe it's the cobra. It could be the cobra. Right. <laughs> Never know. But that's not a sleep paralysis moment because I'm actually up walking around the room. Are you? Are you, yeah. though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I like I said, it's been a while. But I, you know, it started when I was a kid and came out of the closet. And it's it, It's gone through adulthood. But it's been a while. It's been resting, I guess, waiting. It's waiting for its next opportunity to jump out at me. All right. So with the time we have left, um, I, I, I think that it'd be good to just kind of bring bring your own conclusion to to the table. Um, so just just for me to start, I honestly think that for probably a good 90% of sleep paralysis cases, I, I think has a medical reason for it. I, I think is, is a natural, it has nothing to do with the paranormal. Now, obviously the other 90 or the other 10% uh, case by case basis. I mean, it, it definitely could be something. I'm not, I'm not saying that there isn't, a succubus out there, you know, holding you down or, or stuff like that. But I think in the general broad spectrum, most sleep paralysis cases um, are, are going to be able to be naturally explained. I'm uh, I'm going 50, 50 and that's including extraterrestrial type of sleep paralysis stuff. So you know, I'm encompassing all of the paranormal. So you got to throw ETs in there with go with spirits and interdimensional beings and everything else that we talk about that's paranormal. I'm going to say it's 50 50. I'm going to say that I'm going to stick with exactly what I said earlier. I think it's intertwined. I think it's this common ground that the supernatural has found a way to sneak into something that was and maybe it was happening and maybe at one point in time it was all medical 100 percent medical well you know me 99 percent medical you know? right nothing nothing's absolutely nothing's 100 percent, right so <laughs> yeah. maybe at one point it was 99 percent medical and maybe as these these things around us that we don't completely understand have evolved maybe they found a way to they found a spot where they can come in easily and so I'm gonna I'm gonna go 50-50. I'm gonna go two thirds have a medical explanation. I think the one third, I think like I said before, I think it's an umbrella and a lot of different things get just the label of sleep paralysis. So you could have like the alien encounters or abductions, whatever you want to call them. You could have like actual encounters with spirits that maybe are presenting themselves as one thing versus another, whatever you have. Um, I think there's a lot of things that fall under the term sleep paralysis. And I would say about maybe one third are truly paranormal, but just my idea. 
Alrighty. Never well, be never be afraid of what you say. Right? If you feel that a third is what you feel, then come out and say it and be authoritative about it and say, you know what? It's a third. It is a third. It's a third. That is my conclusion. It's a third. There, there you go. Because <laughs> people are, you know, nobody agree. Nobody's going to agree with any of our ideas. They're going to have their own ideas. 60, 40, 70, 30, whatever, you know, and that's the beauty part about having discussions and talking about stuff that doesn't have concrete answers. You know, that's 90% of people are going to agree with me. Yeah, not right. Nine out of a thousand. <laughs> that's how Mike does his math. And for every thousand people that listen, nine people are going to agree with Mike. I said 90, not nine. What? I didn't hear you. You're breaking up. Uh, I, I said uh, they're not. <laughs> Anyways. But yes. Um, so anyway, um, that does it for us this week. Uh, looking forward to next week where we will be talking about nightmares. So kind of uh, the next step uh, past sleep paralysis. So I think uh, night I terrors think too. I think we're going to throw night terrors in next week too. Sure. Kind of with night terrors. Yeah. I think that's a good one two punch. A lot of good stuff Absolutely. on night terrors and kids. And I found a lot, a lot of that today I found while I was looking up sleep paralysis, a lot of overlapping stuff with, with uh, night terrors and kids and sleep paralysis. So. It's a good segue. So, exactly. So, uh, join all three of us next week. Um, again, Lauren, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. So, uh, we'll see everybody next Monday, right here live on the Odyssey Paranormal, Odyssey Paranormal, Odyssey Files Radio Facebook page. Uh, and then, um, I'll upload this immediately. So come tomorrow morning, anybody who wants to listen to it on in podcast form uh, will be able to. So, uh, and if anybody has any questions or stories that they would like us to respond to, you know, here live on the show, go ahead and send them to odyssey files, radio at gmail.com. And uh, we will be sure to do so. And so me, until you know, next send, oh. send in your answers. Send in your answers of whether 50-50 or 90-10 is closer to your to your own personal. Don't don't feelings. don't forget 66-33. Right. Two right. So sorry. Sure. <laughs> two thirds, two thirds, 50% or 90%. 90%. Let's get some voting going. <laughs> yeah. No, we won't. <laughs> At least Lauren and I are in the same neighborhood. Yeah. Whatever. What? Well, I mean, like 60, 67 and 50 is close. You're way the hell out in left field at 90%. Thumb down, Dave. Thumb down. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I'm so hurt. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> I won't sleep tonight uh, now. It'll all be sleep paralysis all night long. No, because your braid will let you up after a couple minutes. Oh, we be, just, we just went I'll over this, Dave. Were you not paying attention? <laughs> I'll be sound asleep. I know. So, uh, all right. So uh, uh, until next week, everybody stay healthy, stay safe. We want to see you back here. Everybody 